All right, y'all, let's wrap this bull you know what at. Before I really get into the review and stuff, let I'm going to be going off on tangents. I really feel it. I feel myself going off on tangents because this is the last time I'm going, I'm going to be able to get out my feelings about these whores and their stupid decisions um, until we come back around next time. And after this season, I don't even know if I'll be around next time. If, I, if any reason I come back, it will be for Garcelle. That's the only reason I will be back on this screen talking about these whores again. It'll be because of Garcelle. I want y'all to know I will be reviewing the Royal Housewives of Salt Lake City when it comes on in November. If there is any other shows or housewives that you guys want me to review, I can even do like throwback reviews if you want me to. Like I can go back and review like past seasons, but get in the comments and let me know. I'm running out of shows, so that's why there hasn't really been a lot, because a lot of shows come to an end. But anyway, also before I start, I'm going to put this at the top, like I normally do. It's always going to be on this channel, hashtag, get Teddy the fuck off my screen. That's it. It's always going to be that way. Um, The only way I'd be happy with next season is if Teddy is no longer on my phone screen and Lisa Renna is no longer on my screen but I know that's not gonna happen because Lisa Renna is super super messy and Andy likes that kind of stuff I don't know why Teddy would come back what does she bring we will get there multiple times actually we start off with this bitch we start off all right so and also I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm so sorry this whole season like i said would be nothing without denise we are on part three and we are still talking about denise friendship relationships with everybody without denise there would be no season there would be no season 10 without denise richards let's just put that on the foreplay but okay so we have denise and teddy um i don't really have many notes there because i'm not gonna lie i got really aggravated like I think I was like less than five minutes and I and I was just so aggravated. I, I was super super aggravated. So a lot of the notes I didn't take because of how like annoyed I was. But all I have here underneath this is we don't really I don't give a fuck about Teddy. I don't really care about her. All I know is that Lisa jumped in because Denise was saying something to Teddy and Lisa jumped her ass in when nobody was talking to her. Lisa, you and Teddy are about to get dragged this episode. This review, I'm going in on Lisa and Teddy in a different way. This is about to be uncharted territories. I'm going off on both of y'all. Lisa Rena, you want to know what you are in today's kids' terms? You're a clout chaser. You're a clout chaser. You do any and everything. You even said last episode, like I've said before, that you like attention. And you will do anything for attention. AKA jumping into something that has nothing to do with you for the, I don't know, 15th fucking time this season. It's not about you. It's not about you. It's not about you. Maybe, you want to know what? Maybe Garcelle had a point with what she said about your children. Because I cannot imagine how it is to be your child and how shit always has to be about you. It always has to be about you, even down to the girls event they showed. Why are you showing your ass at their event? attention no matter the fuck what don't even fucking matter okay so we talk about the whole thing we get into the whole thing about denise and brandy again which i'm so fucking tired of talking about but this is something this is a point i want to i want to bring up okay everybody is bringing up the text messages and i'm not saying that some people don't have any valid points but this is this is a point this is a point i want to understand right when brandy went over when brandy and 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 oof, i was about to say something so disrespectful when Brandy and Kim took their ass over to Kyle's house, right, and they sat there and they was telling them about it, Brandy talked about how upset she was. She was just so fucking hurt, right? She was so hurt. She was just so hurt, right? But my question is, why did nobody ask Brandy? Brandy, um, if you were so hurt by this whole situation, why did you come around? First of all, why did you, which Denise brought up later, she asked to go to Kyle's party with them, but they said no. Okay, let's say y'all didn't know that part. If y'all paid attention to that episode, Brandy was all up and over Denise and Aaron. So my question that nobody asked is, if you were so uncomfortable, Brandy, if you were so unfucking comfortable and so upset with fucking Denise, why is it that at that party you were so up her ass? 
When she first walked into that party, you was the first person to jump up and say, oh my gosh, Denise is here. You tried to climb on her. You said, oh, we can have a threesome when y'all was at the bar. So I am so confused on how nobody remembers that. So, so everybody remembers the fact that, everybody remembers, I guess, the fact that Denise said that she didn't talk to, um, to, to Brandy before the party, but y'all don't remember what actually happened at the party. I know y'all watched the show like the rest of us did. Brandy is not innocent she's full of shit and then her watch what happens live interview after like last week's episode even proves more talking about some oh well i don't know the the text messages are somewhere in the cloud yeah bitch i bet they are i bet they are i bet the fuck they are so then we keep going talking about brandy da, 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 da. and so lisa reno pulls out printed you know printed you know printed uh text messages or whatever that's between brandy and denise Again, I'm about to go in on you as normal. You're thirsty as fuck. Why do you have that? Are you the one fucking Denise? Are you the one fucking Brandy? Are you the one who wants to fuck Brandy? And are you are you the mad side bitch or something who you really, really want to fuck Brandy so badly, but Denise is in your way and Denise won't uh, get the fuck out of your way so that you can just be with your boo? That's how you're coming off. You're coming off like a mad main bitch who, got, who caught her. You... You're coming off like a woman who caught her nigga with a side bitch. That, that's what you're acting like. Pulling out text messages again. And I can't wait till we get to this point like Andy had brought the fuck up. But you're thirsty as hell. For you to have those text messages, it shows how thirsty you are. It shows how much you want attention. And it shows how much at the end of the day, like I keep saying, you are nobody's fucking friend. I don't know how anybody after watching this season in particular could say, yeah, I think I think Lisa Rand is a good friend. I'd love to be friends with her. That bitch will turn on you in a, a quick second, quick hot ass second, okay? And so, and so after she pulls out the text messages, Denise pretty much says, "All right, Lisa, well you don't want me to pull out the text messages between me and you." Then Lisa goes, "Oh well, it's not about me." Exactly. That's the thing. Is this is what boggles my mind about Lisa? You have said multiple times that it's not your business, right? It's not your business. So that's where it should be dropped and ended. It's not your fucking business. And like I said, and everybody everybody who doesn't understand is you're not paying a fucking attention. I have said this from the very beginning of this season. It's not about what Brandy said about those girls. It has nothing to do with that. People, the, the girls on the show that pay, that that are all rolled up into it like Lisa, they just want to know whether or not she fucked the Brandy. They don't care about whether or not she said anything about Brandy to them. She, they don't care about that. They want to be nosy and they want to know if they fucked. That's what's going on here. Specifically Lisa Renna, that's what she cares about. She don't care about whether or not she was talked about. That, clearly, that has... That's obvious. If it wasn't obvious during the show, it's definitely obvious this reunion. I, and I've been saying this, and it's like nobody's fucking paying attention. Y'all clearly are all being, y'all clearly all messy, and y'all are nosy. And y'all want to know something, know about something that's none of y'all fucking business. That's what it gets down to. And everybody sees it. Again, Erica, again, Teddy, again, Lisa. No, Denise doesn't have to hold nobody's hand. She don't got to explain nothing to nobody. We got eyes. We got 2020. We see, okay? And so, so like I said, so Garcelle goes off like me. Garcelle, me and Garcelle said the same thing back to back during this part. Why the fuck do you care, Lisa? Why the fuck do you care? And Andy asked the question that I've been waiting for somebody to fucking ask. Let's, Lisa, let's, let's say it's true. And she, he said, forgive me, Denise. Let's say it's true. Let's say she did fuck Brandy. And let's just say she she don't want to tell nobody because that's her business. Then what? She go and now Lisa go. Oh well, I mean then she could have come and talked to me about it because I would have helped her. And Garcelle did the same thing I did. She started laughing. She's like, "Are you fucking serious, Lisa? Look, look, do I even really have to explain? Look at how you're acting, right now. So you really think?" That if she would have came and told you it would have been better or something like that makes absolutely no sense, Lisa. You are nobody's fucking friend. You're nobody's friend. And I appreciate Andy for at least saying that. And he said something else, so I'm gonna bring up it um, later. Even if it's all true, then what? She fucked Brandy. Now what? Because see, if I was Denise the way I would have handled it, you you I don't know if any of y'all watched the Real Housewives of Atlanta, but a couple seasons ago, 
um Sheree was dealing with this guy or whatever and pretty much and there was like a little rumor saying that him and Nene had fucked around so when they was on a reunion and they asked me Nene was like I think Nene had put like put out like yeah I fucked him and so when they asked on the reunion she was like yeah oh we did it we sure did we did it everywhere we sure did oh that was my boo that's how I would have answered it because all right we did do it now what what are you gonna do about it and what's gonna change if I do it period period fucking period okay and then we have kyle jumping fucking this this whole like this whole itty bitty section right here this little itty bitty section literally pissed me off so much like i really have to go outside like to take a breath i was so fucking frustrated because it's all stupid kyle goes again well it's just about being honest we just want you to be honest as she keeps fucking saying which is getting on my fucking nerves and andy asked the most poignant fucking question that he didn't ask this whole damn thing Okay, Kyle. But here's the thing. She's saying that that's her truth. Whether or not you believe her, she's saying that that's her truth. So similar to Lisa. So now what? And Kyle never answered that question. All she kept saying is, oh, well, to be honest, be honest. And Denise said what we've all been saying, which is, that is my truth. I've been telling y'all this whole season what it is that what my truth is and y'all refuse to believe it and take it that's the fact of the matter y'all keep on saying that she's lying and she's not being honest but you can't tell what somebody is lying and not lying about that's her fucking life none of y'all was there king unless y'all was there unless there is photographic video evidence of them fucking none of y'all can say for sure if she's lying you can think it you can believe it but she can't fucking prove it so you asked her she told you her truth. She don't owe none of you hoes to tell y'all the truth in the first place. The only person she owe is her husband. Y'all not her husband. Y'all not her husband. Okay. So like Andy said, she told y'all y'all truth. And y'all still continued the whole freaking season. Y'all spent the whole season on this after she said a thousand and ten times that she didn't do it. It doesn't matter whether or not it's true or not because it's not your fucking business okay. period it's not your business i don't know and i feel like no i know for a fact i have said that exact same thing and had this rant this entire season and that's why i'm that's why i, I didn't even do my reviews on time because this whole season is repetitive it's repetitive and that's why we are all annoyed Y'all all sat up here. Y'all need it. Y'all literally used Denise for a storyline this entire fucking season. But then want to try to throw her under the bus. Y'all needed her for this season. Like I said, what the fuck was going on with Kyle? Nobody cared. Other than her, her little fuckity fuck fashion line show that clearly she didn't do anything in. No, no storyline there. Dorit storyline was what? That she made up a room in Buka de Pepo? That was over in the episode in a fucking half. Lisa Renna used her child. Yeah, used her child as a storyline this fucking season. There wasn't one time for real that we seen her by herself. It's always surrounded by, by her grown ass fucking child, okay? Erica, she had somewhat of a storyline because she was doing Chicago, and then we had Gar fucking Sal. But outside of that, none of y'all hoes had a storyline this season. None of y'all did. If it wasn't for Denise, this would be boring. It's annoying, but it would be super boring. There'd be nothing going the fuck on. Nothing. And I want to understand, okay, I don't care. I want to talk about this for a quick second. I want to understand why we didn't bring up what happened with Pop Snow. Actually, no, because I actually have a whole tangent. I'm going to go off on that when we get there already. So, yep, so like I said, Kyle never answered the fucking question because, again, she told y'all it didn't matter. We get on to Erica. I'm sorry, Erica. I know I... I do believe that she loves Tom, but I do believe that they have an arrangement as well. I feel like they have an arrangement, and I like the arrangement. It seems like it works, and it, it works for her. You look good. You got the money. It is what it is, okay? Um, they asked, um, I just want to put this little tidbit in. When they went to the place that Erica had originally worked at before, like, she had met Tom and stuff, Lisa had said, oh, well, I would never have my daughters work here, which, and, and somebody brought up, asked, okay, well, what's the difference between go-go dancers and... And your daughter dancing half naked on Instagram for the free. Or not even for the free. They're dancing. They're, they're half naked on Instagram. So way more people can see them. So what's the difference? Huh? Oh, I guess there is no difference. There's not. There's not. See? Karma. 
But karma is real, Lisa. It's gonna come back on you. Watch when this shit comes back on you. It's gonna come back on you so fucking hard, okay? Um, and then uh, he, so he asked pretty much. So then we get into the whole thing about why did Garcelle say, you know, that she felt like Lisa was trying to take her spotlight. It is true. At least all the times that we saw it, every time that Lisa was around and Erica brought up Chicago, she did always say, oh, you're going to have a great time because I did it too. And Bravo, y'all yourselves showed multiple times that Lisa did that. So Garcelle was just peeping in like the rest of us. It is what it is. She said what it is that she said. Garcelle said, well, look, it's just what I noticed. So Garcelle, I mean, so Lisa being petty was like, oh, well, I went to her show. You didn't go to her show. You didn't go to her show. So how, so how supportive are you? And Garcelle called Garcelle for the blah, 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 blah. Just because I didn't physically show up to the show does not mean that I didn't support her. So you need to calm the fuck down. Because Garcelle was really looking at Lisa like, she started laughing, I already know, because she was like, Lisa, <laughs> you can do that shit with Garcelle. I mean, you can do that shit with Denise. But don't swing it this way. Don't swing it this way because this is not what you want. That's what that laugh was. That laugh that Garcelle did was, Lisa, you don't want this. You don't want this. Like, you could have your fun with Denise, but you don't want you you don't want these problems. Not over here, Lisa. Because Lisa, Garcelle's the wrong one to try. She's the wrong one to try. And then, um, here we go with Teddy. I'm so excited. Y'all ready for me to drag Teddy? Okay, let's go. All right, so, Teddy jumps in. As normal, when nobody fucking asked her, my favorite tweet of all time that I just seen is, Teddy, shut the fuck up. Enough already. I'm here for that tweet. That's my feeling every time I see Teddy. Teddy jumps in and goes, speaking of that, you know, you guys always want to talk about being empowering and not being petty. But Garcelle and Denise, y'all never showed up for her, um, uh, for her performance so i don't understand how you guys could be empowering i had to pause right there because the, the the rant that i had in my spirit i had to get it together um teddy before i really go off let me say something just because they didn't show up to her play does not i, I want to understand how that's being petty because you said out your mouth that they talk about being empowering and not being petty how is it being petty that they didn't show up? From what I understand, Garcelle does not have a problem with Erica. From what I understand, Denise doesn't have a real problem with Erica. Maybe with Aaron, but not a real problem with Erica. So how is it that them not showing up is petty? Now, Denise says that she didn't show up. I guess she, I mean, I guess this was around the time the season this was going on. So I can understand why she wouldn't show up because, girl, I'm not really friends with you. Let's be real. Denise is not friends with none of y'all hoes, so none of y'all is really friends. Only a few of y'all is friends within a circle, but Denise is not really friends with y'all. Garcelle is not really friends with y'all to an extent, so that's that. But, yeah, so Denise said that she couldn't go. Garcelle's pretty much said that, number one, she don't do small planes, and outside of not doing small planes, and they're like, oh, it wasn't a small plane. It was this. How was she supposed to know that? First of all, everybody ain't, ain't, ain't. I guess I would say when y'all tax bracket, I guess everybody doesn't freaking know how, what, what, uh, the, the size of a freaking plane. Like they said the plane name and I'm still like, what is that supposed to mean to me? If I hear somebody say, oh, we're going to charter a plane for us to go somewhere. I'm automatically thinking it's a smaller fucking plane than a commercial fucking plane, period. And no, I'm not going on my fucking way to fuck. Oh, well, Dorit made a commercial uh, flight. Let's be real. No shade. And everybody know I love Dorit. What does Dorit have to do? Dorit doesn't have a job. She don't have, she has children, but she has nannies that take care of them. What are you talking about? You can't compare her to Dorit. Dorit don't got a life. No shade, I not love Dorit. But she don't really have a life like Garcelle do. Garcelle works. Garcelle acts. And she took on this show as an extra thing. As you've seen, she wasn't even on the majority of the damn season because she was working. So no, I'm not taking time out away from seeing my kids when I barely get to see them at all to go and see Erica, what do Chicago for right now? I can see her do it later. I'm pretty sure if she wanted to go see her, she probably would have went to go see her later. But on top of that, it didn't seem like Erica had too big of an attitude, but she didn't really stand up for Garcelle at all. And I find it funny, right? Because now this, this was your own words out of your mouth, right? Erica said, well, I mean, people, you know, this person came from Mexico and this person came from that. And everybody stopped there to you guys to come and see me. But you also said earlier that your husband never came and seen you. Oh, he was supposed to come the week right of COVID. I bet. I fucking bet. No, he wasn't. So like somebody said on Twitter, I find it funny that you're holding Garcelle to a higher standard and the rest of y'all than her own fucking husband. 
you set out your own mouth everybody stopped what they was stop what they was doing right so if that's your husband and he's as rich as he is and he's as as powerful as he is you're trying to tell me that on opening night he couldn't have stopped he couldn't have stopped what he was doing to come and see you again I like your arrangement, but don't hold other people to a higher standard than you do your own fucking husband, the person that you fucking laying next to. That's how I feel about that. But as far as Teddy is fucking concerned, let me get on something real fast. You want to talk about empowering, right? You want to talk about empowering. This is what I mean, karma's a bitch. So while I was on Twitter, you know, I kept seeing people say, oh, well, you want to talk about empowering, but what about your diet? And I looked into it, Teddy. You're fucking at, you're talking about empowering women, but you're charging women six to seven hundred fucking dollars for you who have who 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 i don't know that you went to school with this because actually this was a story like a couple seasons ago you talk about you're an accountability coach which i don't know what the fuck that means i don't know what that means you're not licensed in anything you didn't go to school to be nobody's therapist i don't know you to be no fucking licensed as fitness health trainer but apparently on your little little challenge that you got for people your little program that you got for people i wish i I don't feel like editing this video because it's long enough, but literally there's a picture where it shows like the meal plans that they send people. It's literally one piece of lettuce. I'm serious, y'all. I want y'all to Google it. It's literally a piece of lettuce, not some. Literally like somebody took it off and an itty bitty carried on it and an itty bitty beat. And that's what they're supposed to eat. I've seen a lot of the text messages that your quote unquote accountability coaches, if they don't do certain things like on the on the program, like if they like, let's say, miss a day, like as far as eating or something like that correctly, you get kicked off with no refund. So you want to talk about empowering and you yourself, from what I understand, that was the eating disorder. And now you are pretty much in your program, like like doing that same cycle look at what you're telling people to eat i read an article where an actual doctor said that shit's not healthy how much you're telling how much how many calories you're telling people to take the fucking you don't even have real doctors and whatnot looking pretty much overseeing your stuff and talking to these people i've seen a lot of text messages that the accountability coaches are fucking texting people this is trash the fact that you have to send in a picture every fucking day what your weight is that is ridiculous and i'm not paying i don't give a fuck who your damn daddy is i ain't paying nobody for that shit so you want to talk empowering how about you fix your damn business to make sure that it's empowering people versus making them feel worse about themselves how about that and that's what i'm talking about karma you so worried about everybody the fuck else this whole damn season teddy all you have done is stuck your damn nose and everything like somebody said you are a glorified fucking commentator that's what teddy is she's a glorified fucking commentator who doesn't have a fucking life and you want to be real about something teddy too you want to talk about oh well y'all didn't come to erica's um to erica's uh uh you know play teddy you don't have a fucking job let's be real you're an accountability coach you don't do anything you don't have a real job you live off of your daddy's money which there's nothing fucking wrong with that but you have the time a lot of people they actually have businesses i don't know shit that they actually worked for Okay, nobody has time to just be sitting around, laying around, popping out babies left and fucking right and doing whatever it is that they want to fucking do. Going from here to New York just because they can. And you should be careful, especially during COVID, talking about that. Everybody's not as privileged as you, okay? People have jobs. Jobs. A job. Okay? Not a fake-ass wannabe Jenny Craig. Teddy, you pissed me off this whole fucking season. I'm tired of it. I don't want to see Teddy on my screen no more. And I know it's not just me because I be seeing it on Twitter. Teddy brings nothing to this show. And I will keep saying it to the bitches off my fucking TV. She don't bring anything to this show. She is a glorified fucking commentator. She does nothing. She brings nothing. And I want to understand why the whole Pop Smoke situation wasn't brought up. I want to understand that, huh? I want to understand that. I want to understand why nobody asks about the Pop Smoke situation. And if y'all don't know, Pop Smoke, the rapper, he was shot and killed. And it was at the house that she owned. And I want to understand why nobody asked her about that. I want to understand why. I want to understand why. Hmm? 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 I 
I'm gonna fucking understand it. I'm sorry. I tell you, Courtney pisses me off. I don't fucking like her, okay? Then we get into Aaron and well, the whole thing with Aaron coming around. And at the end of the day, no, Aaron should have never said what it is that he said to them girls. However, Denise did bring up a good point. You, Erica, specifically waited for me to leave to say something to Aaron, which Erica said I did because I didn't want you to take him away. But that's the thing, Erica. You can't ask for the smoke. And then get mad when the smoke comes toward you. So you purposely came at Aaron, right? To try to confront him about the situation. But you didn't like the way that he responded. So don't ask for the smoke if you ain't willing to get it. That's how I feel about that. Then we talk about the fashions. The re is fashion queen, as always, Erica. But you do be looking good, too. Then we talk about, we don't want to Lisa and Denise. I'm so fucking tired of talking about this. We're at the end, y'all. Denise said that Lisa Reed ran an ex different on the show. I believe that because as I keep saying, she would do anything for attention. So I believe that as soon as the cameras come on, she's a completely different person. I believe that. And that she turned on her. And that's facts. Um, <clears throat> they talk about how Denise always gets hugs and leaves. But I would too. And I, I said this from the beginning of the season. I just don't think that reality TV is for Denise. I just don't. And that's okay. It's reality tv really isn't for everybody and i don't think that she can deal with like the the bullshit that comes along with it it's a little bit too much for her and she has dealt with enough in the public eye shout out to her ex-husband um so i can understand it and she's not gonna be on it next season good for you denise good good for you because i wouldn't come back to the show after all this bullshit either so good for you let them find a storyline without you let them try to do it that time. Let them find somebody else to pick on. And Teddy, if you are here next season and you're the one that's getting picked on or Cal's the one that's getting picked on, I hope you keep the same energy. Just saying, okay? Alrighty, so Lisa talks about the text messages again. And one thing that Lisa said, which that makes no sense to me, Lisa said, y'all have, you and Brandy have a thread of messages, but you've only, a year thread of messages, but you've only seen each other three times. Lisa, I... Again, people work. Like, I know that you work, but my thing about it is, like, I have best friends that I talk to constantly. I think the last time I seen my, my best friend was maybe, like, six months ago. I probably see my best friends maybe twice a year, and we live in the exact same city. So, no, it's not that hard to believe as far as I'm concerned. Just because you text people a lot, text them is a whole lot easier than actually being face-to-face. -face, so that doesn't make any sense to me at all, all right? Then um, Lisa pretty much says, you know, because Andy says, you know, well, do you wish like things would be different? Do you wish you would have never did this? And Lisa's like, well, I wish I would have never brought her on the show. And you see everybody's like, ooh, because normally, normally people, the housewives do that because it's like, well, damn, you pretty much coming for somebody's livelihood. But you want to know what the difference is, Lisa? Denise doesn't need this show, unlike you and a lot of your other counterparts. She has a job. She's been having jobs. This is probably just an extra check for Denise. But in all reality, she don't need this money on top of the stress that comes with it. So, Lisa, you you feel like you big dog because you brought her on the show? Who the fuck cares, Lisa? You can get off this show, too. All they need is one or two little feisty girls. And, Lisa, you can be the fuck up out of here, too. You can be out of here, too. Nobody is is, is, is above being replaced. I want you to remember that. Nobody on, on any of the housewives are above, um, uh, are, are above being replaced or kicked off the show. Always remember that, little girl. Always remember that, okay? Um, and then the messiest shit that she did, the whole thing is Lisa Renna brought up, oh, well, you want to talk about being friends? Well, was you a friend to Heather Locklear? Now, Andy was being messy because I know. Now, I didn't know what, what she was talking about, but I know Andy messy ass did. Andy is too messy to not know what she was talking about. I know damn well he, I know damn well he knew what she was talking about, okay? And again, Lisa will do anything for attention. Oh, that's what I put. At the end of the day, Lisa will do anything for attention. And if that means throwing her friends under the bus, so be it. At the end of the day, that's what happened. She was friends with Denise. I do believe that she was friends with Denise initially. But when she seen that this season, it was more beneficial for her to not be friends with Denise on camera. Or that's what she thought it was going to be. That's what she did. She threw her under the bus so that she could look good. Or so that she could get more attention. That's what it is. And she also inserted herself into that situation so that she could put her little two cents in and again, get more attention. But as far as the Heather Locklear thing, I had to look it up. So apparently, what she's saying is that Back in the day, I don't know, maybe like 10 years ago, however fucking long it was, there was pretty much a thing going on where Heather Locklear, uh, please tell me if I'm wrong, but I think it's Heather Locklear and her husband, like, divorced, right? But then Denise started messing around with that woman's husband. Now, the I guess the gag is, oh, well, apparently Heather and Denise was friends, so people are trying to say, like, oh, well, you pretty much was messing around with her husband, you know, 
while they were still married and y'all were still friends and denise has said multiple times i read a lot of interviews that that's not true that her and husband were friends at one point in time but then they didn't but then they weren't friends for a long time and that her and what and her and him started messing around like way after like her and heather wasn't friends anymore like it had been a while since they wasn't friends anymore and so yeah that was that but they didn't start messing with each other until they had split up so lisa being a messy bitch brought that up why because she's messy and she's nobody's fucking friend at the end of the fucking day the season gave me a fucking headache and i'm gonna end it on this note there would have been no season 10 of the real housewives of beverly hills without denise richards and that's on period and lisa renna is nobody's friend and hashtag get teddy the fuck off of my screen bye-bye